What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we're going to be doing the full review on the Shark Apex. Now this is the first generation of the Shark Apex, model AX952. I also have the 0M version of the Apex, which this version I'll be reviewing at a later date, probably shortly after this review. Now there are a few differences between the two variants, but I'll discuss that more in the review of the 0M. This particular machine is not too hard, not, well I should say not too easy to find anymore. It is not available for sale and most places do not have it new or refurbished. So most of the time you're going to find this second hand. So is it worth a potential look if you're looking for a used shark and is giving up the self-cleaning brush roll worth the potential savings and cost? Well, let's find out in this full review of the Shark Apex. So right out of the gate, we're going to be doing a pickup test on both carpets and bare floors. I'm going to change the switch on the top of the handle between the two settings. I've got a quarter of a cup of potato flakes spread out on the carpet, the bare floor, and in between. And we're going to see how well this shark does. Most of it, now we're going to clean up the rest of it and see how it did. And we're going to look at the results. So there are a few flakes left, but it did an okay job. One thing I noticed is that it didn't agitate the carpet very well at all. The carpet is still very matted down. It's not its not really fluffed up in any way. I can feel that this part of the carpet is a lot fluffier. This part is really matted and really warm. And it seems like the shark has not really agitated all that much. Now, looking at the bare floor, the bare floor performance is excellent. That dual clean brush roller actually did a great job. And that is the best bare floor performance that I have ever seen in this pickup test. Now, there are a couple flakes on the transition between the carpet and the bare floor. That's fairly typical. So, all of that is pretty good. So, overall results of the pickup test are pretty good. It did pick up most of the flakes on carpets and all the flakes on the bare floors. So this machine does really shine when it comes to bare floor performance, and we'll talk more about that in a second. There's two main selling points when it comes to the Shark Apex. The first is the dual clean technology, which basically is just a soft roller strapped to the front of a pretty basic carpet roller. And the idea is that both of these rollers turn in unison, and that allows bigger debris to pass underneath the nozzle and then get into the air path. And it also has a bit of a dusting effect on hard floors, which does great for fine debris, which we saw in the pickup test. So the dual clean rollers do pretty much nothing on carpets. In fact, in car on carpets, I find that they're a detriment because both of these rollers turning causes the vacuum to pull itself really far forward and very fast as well. It gets to the point where it's very difficult to drive it properly because you have to have a lot of resistance to pull the machine back. And this machine is heavy. It technically only weighs 17 pounds, but because of the fact that the motor is mounted above the power head and it's in a separate pod that's part of the lift away function, that means that you're holding a lot more of that weight in your hand and it makes it very tiring on the arm. So it's not the kind of machine that I would want to use for an extended period of time as even simply cleaning my living room leaves a lot of strain in my hand and in my back. When I compare that to something like the Dyson Ball Animal 2, which is the exact same weight, in fact it's a little bit heavier, that machine is way easier to maneuver, the solo steering is a lot more, a lot smoother, and it just works a lot better. It doesn't have nearly as much dragging down on the machine. So if you have problems with maneuverability, or you are very sensitive to heavy vacuums, then don't buy this. This is not going to be a good fit for you. 
And if you're used to a cheaper, much lighter weight shark like the NV352, then again, this is going to be way too heavy uh, for you to be able to actually use it and enjoy the experience. However, you do get some things in return. You do, to, you do get a longer cord, you get a 30 foot cord, which is not long enough. I mean, it's, it's fine, it's passable, it's better than the 25 foot cord on the non-powered lift away machines, but compared to the Dyson that has a 35 foot cord, it still leaves a little bit to be desired, but it is the bare minimum of what I would expect. And also, if you look where the cord is, we do have a little hook right here on the wand that can help keep the cord out of the way. Of course, you have to pull this cord out whenever you want to release the wand, but it's an option and you can use it. Now, one of the things that is supposed to be a great selling point for this machine is the power to lift away technology. So the idea is, and you would have to pull the cord out for this, is that you can push this button right here, this blue button, and you can lift away, hence the name, the entire vacuum uh, motor assembly and that would allow you to then get underneath furniture so there's this little clip that keeps the hose out of the way which I do like and the idea is that you can then use this to go underneath furniture and whatnot and all that works great the problem is that while this power lift away does work great and it gives you the same clean performance as plenty of of other machines uh, actually, I, I said that wrong. It gives you the performance of the machine even whenever it is fully together. Because of that issue that I described where the vacuum pulls itself forward, it makes it very hard to steer this when it's in the power lift away mode. And I'll demonstrate that in a sec. Of course, it's hard to actually feel it on camera, but while it is nice to have it, it's not very pleasant to use in my experience. So. It's purely functional. It's not something that, you know, would be pleasant to use. And if you're trying to carry this whole unit, this is extremely heavy. And this is not an insignificant amount of weight to be carrying with you. And this hose is also not very stretchable either. It does stretch, but it's very bulky. And it can cause the machine to fall over. Or if you're trying to set this on the ground, this will fall over. And it's just overall a very cumbersome machine to use. And all of that is not very well thought out. So real quick, I'll demonstrate the power lift away function on the Apex. Now, thankfully, the hose on this is a little bit easier to deal with than the Zero M. See, the cord likes to get stuck in there. But again, this is very heavy. You do have fingertip controls. So all of the wiring also goes through the hose as well. And the pins on these are very likely to break. I've had that happen before. So, we're going to try this with the power lift away function and see how well it gets underneath my couch. And then once you're done, you just take the pod and click it back on, just like that. Now, I don't know if you could see this on film, but whenever I was going underneath the couch, while it was nice that it got underneath the couch, it did, it did get stuck a little bit, but that's not really its fault. My couch just happens to be a little bit too low. It did get underneath it, and it was able to clean underneath the couch, which is great. The problem is that even with the pod on, the vacuum yanks itself forward way too much, and with the pod off, it just exacerbates the problem even more because you have two brush holes fighting you while you're trying to pull the head back. And all that resistance means that the head ends up just lifting itself off the floor. And as a result, it's not cleaning in the backward stroke. So it works, kind of, but it's not very practical. And it's definitely a nice feature to have, but because of how inconsistent it is and how relatively not user-friendly it is, I wouldn't recommend buying this machine for the power lift away feature as it's just not executed very well, especially with the combination of the duo clean brush roller.
Speaking of the dual clean brush roller, since this is the model without the self-cleaning brush roll, you do have to clean this brush roller every once in a while. So there's two little buttons right here on either side. And in fact, I'm going to remove the power head to show you this a bit more simply. And in the process, show you how to take all these, all these bits apart. So there's a wand release button right here underneath. You press that and that allows your hose to pop out. So if you want to use your hand tools, you can do that pretty easily. There's a hose release button right here. But there's one thing I do like about this machine is everything's very modular. When you take the cord out of the clip, you can press the wand release button. The wand pops out. The wand itself is a nice sturdy metal, but the rest of it, not so much. I'll talk about that in a sec. And then you can then press this, again, on this model blue button, and that removes the base assembly from the main unit. And there's a dust cup release button right here in the main unit, which you press, and that allows you to remove the dust canister. And you can open up both sides to empty it, which I really like. So you would empty it from the bottom, but you can also open up the top to make sure that the cyclone and everything in here is clean. That is one thing I really like about sharks, is that they are very easy to clean. While the cyclones are very rudimentary, and that means you have to clean the filters more often than something like a Dyson, when you do want to clean it, it's very easy to clean out the entire thing. The filters are right here. So you've got this filter, and there's a small pad underneath. You need to wash both of these filters about every month. And then underneath is a HEPA filter underneath this little tab. And this HEPA filter you want to change about every year. So there's a lot of filter maintenance on this, which I don't like. And if you use this vacuum very frequently, then you may need to clean the filters even more often. The good news is that the filters are incredibly cheap. So you can always just buy a spare set or just change them if you don't feel like washing them. In fact, I bought an entire set of these filters for a slightly different shark for like $8. And that was the entire set too. So if you shop right, you can get filters for very cheap. They'll be relatively low quality aftermarket filters, but still filters nonetheless. So while there is a lot of maintenance because of how ubiquitous sharks are, the actual running costs for this machine are not that bad. So I've heard some people say that these have large running costs, and as long as none of the physical parts break and you're just replacing filters, then this is actually really cheap. Because even though you have to replace the filters fairly often, you can find them for incredibly cheap. Even the genuine shark ones are not all that expensive. So that is definitely a positive. Now, now that we've covered that, we're going to go back to the power head. So the way that this works is there are two little buttons right here that you push and this little garage as they call it pops open on the 0M version there's teeth here but again I'll talk about that more in the 0M version and you can see this gets really dirty and we can even see a lot of the particles that we vacuumed up actually just ended up stuck on both on the soft roller and on this little area between the two rollers so that's not that's not a great design now, unfortunately, Shark has designed this main brush roller to not be removable. So if your brush roller stops turning for whatever reason, you can't remove this brush roller. There is no way to clean the, ins the ends of it off. There's no way to replace this. The only way that you can replace this brush roller is if you replace the entire cleaner head, and Shark does not cover it under warranty. So if you have one of these and your brush roller is toasted, you're just going to have to buy a whole new cleaner head and Shark will refuse to cover it under warranty, which is just anti-consumer and just a bad design overall. So I've had many issues with Shark in that regard in terms of the way that their warranty works, especially with their power heads. It's a very, very unsettling business practice, and if you get caught in the crossfire, then you may have one of these fail on you prematurely, and even if you're still within the warranty period, you'll still have to shell out $100 for a new nozzle. And that's also in the case of if this if this little uh, neck breaks, which this neck is not very good quality. We can see it's rubbing on the plastic. This internal hose on the earlier sharks broke. On this one, it's built a lot better, so thankfully they did fix that. The wheels are rubber-coated, but the wheels underneath are prone to fail, particularly these smaller wheels right here. A lot of people have complained about these wheels failing. And this overall head while it looks very cool and while the felt strip does great at bare floor performance the durability is not designed very well 
You do have a pull tab right here, so you can remove the soft roller to clean this out. And a lot of junk gets stuck behind here, so you want to do that. You can wash these, and you can replace these soft rollers. So if you do get one of these, I recommend popping out this soft roller and cleaning it probably every time you empty the bin. And there are slots along this brush roller where you can clean out the hair. But again, you can't remove the hair, so it's, or I should say you can't remove the brush roller. You can obviously manually pull the hair out, or you can take a blade and run it along here and cut out the hair, but it's not very easy. So a shark making this a self-cleaning brush roll on their newer units was a good call. This just also pops right on. Sometimes this little guard right here gets chewed up. I've seen a lot of people chew up this rubber guard. I don't know how that happens, but it's something to watch out for. And also, these little, uh, three little contacts in here can often break, and that can cause the power head to not work. So, uh, there's also an indicator right here. If this is red, then make sure there's no jams in it, and if it's still red, then you probably need a new cleaner head. If you have no power going to this at all, then it's probably either the power head went bad, or perhaps something happened with the handle or with the wand. There's a lot of places where things could go wrong. Uh, on one of Shark's different machines, this one was under recall because it was getting way too hot and shocking people. And this hose can sometimes fail as well. And if any of these fail, you're not going to get the power down to your power head for it to actually spin. So you want to be careful with all that. And all that goes back together fairly simply. Now, as far as build quality goes, we can see, for example, a lot of this stuff is very creaky plastic. We do have a swivelable cord hook to easily remove this, and that just slots in right, oh, slots in right there, and this hose plugs in right here. Neither, neither end of this hose has a swiveling joint, so this can get twisted pretty easily, and that just locks in there. It clicks in nicely. And you do have a little clip to keep the hose out of the way. I do like that feature. But the build quality on this, the whole thing just creaks a lot. There's a lot of play in the machine. And it just overall does not feel like it's built the best. And again, because the motor is way far up on this design, you're holding a lot of that weight in your hands. And it's very heavy and it's not all that easy to maneuver. It does have a swivel neck, which does work but it's not the most well thought out. So, finally, we'll talk about the attachments. So, I already showed you how to pull off the hose, and you can use the wand. You can also attach the power head directly to the hose if you want to, for whatever reason. And you do have plenty of options as far as attachments. you got a crevice tool, you have an upholstery tool and dusting brush combo, and most notably, you have this motorized tool, which clicks on and you press this button right here to flip it over and this motorized tool actually works okay it's sometimes it works really good and then there are other times where it just doesn't work very well at all it does have a little pull tab where you can pull this apart and you also have a light right here that switches whenever you pull this out of the power head otherwise you have led lights on the front which are very nice that is a nice touch Although, I've said this a million times on vacuums, it'd be nice if there was an option to manually turn the lights on and off, because not everybody likes the lights, but having the option is still really nice. So, this mini motorized tool, it doesn't work all that well. i found that there are some times when it works okay, and there's some times where it just does terrible at picking up. Um, the turbo tool on a lot of other machines does better, and this is motorized. This actually uses power, so it should work better since it's not air-driven, but in my experience, it doesn't. So that's disappointing. One thing that is nice is that you can press this and flip this up like this, and that allows you to actually store the turbo tool on board the machine, which is really nice. So you can click that in right there, and you have your turbo tool on board. Now, unfortunately, there's only two attachment spots, so you can't have your crevice tool, your dusting brush, and your turbo tool. You have to pick two of them. So, that's a little annoying, but not fairly atypical or sharp. So, that's pretty much that. So, my overall thoughts on this machine are, 
it's not that great. Uh, it has its advantages. If you're buying this particularly for hard floors, it's excellent. The suction on it is really good. It's powerful. It's not too quiet. Uh, or I should say it's not too loud. It's it's not too quiet, but it's not too loud either. And the cord length is okay. The hose is a lot better than the newer Apexes. The attachments are so-so. And the carpet cleaning performance does leave a bit to be desired. My biggest complaints with this are the weight and the reliability. Because those are very big problems. And personally for me are deal breakers. And why I personally don't choose to use this machine or recommend it to anybody unless you specifically have only hard floors and you're willing to put up with the fact that you may have to replace parts out of warranty to keep this machine running for an extended period of time. So while its hard floor performance is exceptional, there isn't much else that I personally see as a benefit to this machine other than the occasional power lift away feature, which like I mentioned, still isn't that great. So. Shark's first generation Apex does leave some things to be desired. They have improved on this in newer units, so I will review the Shark Apex Zero M to see what improvements they've made to the Zero M model of this machine, which I have it right here off camera. So that will be my next Shark review. The Zero M version of this will see what they've improved and what has stayed the same, probably most because it looks like most of the same vacuum. But overall, this Shark Apex gets a mixed review from me, and that is pretty much that. Shark doesn't sell it anymore anyways, but if you can find a good deal on it, I would say pick it up. I got this for super cheap because I bought it from somebody when it was clogged, and I simply unblocked it and got it working, and I only paid about 30 bucks for this machine. That's the ideal situation to get one of these, because I don't really feel like paying, paying, paying full price is worth it, considering what else is out there from companies like Dyson and Mila. So, anyways, this was IntelliTech Studio signing out with my full review of the Shark Apex AX952. I hope you found this helpful and found it enjoyable. And again, I'm, I don't mean this in any way. It's, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be negative for no reason. I just genuinely did not like this machine. You're not going to like every machine that you use, and this machine is definitely one of those machines. If you want a Shark, I'd recommend the Shark ZU560 or even the Shark NV352. In both of those machines, you do sacrifice the power to lift away function, but the normal lift away is a lot more usable, and the rest of the machine is just built a lot better and refined, and also less money to boot, so there's less of a risk with those machines. So that's my recommendation, get something different. So anyways, this is IntelliTech Studio signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace.